Hi, I'm Val Curtis, and I want to welcome you to a very special edition of Friday Harbor Live. Um, when in light of recent events, um, one of the first things I started thinking about is what resources can we pull together? And the immediate person who I went to was our very talented Melina Lagos from the library. And so she's our youth services manager there. And um, I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, we always bring our brilliant and talented islanders here to share their skills and stories with island kids of all ages. And right now we're going to share some resources with you um, for stories that you can share with them and books that you can write with them from a variety of voices. Um, in light of the recent and historical events, I want to let you know that I am in a process of learning and trying. Um, in doing that, I am kind of throwing myself out there and taking risks and talking about things in the way that I never have before. Um, in taking risks, I know I'm gonna make mistakes and I am working to change and I welcome ch corrections publicly and privately, anything to keep the conversation going. So I do know that I may misstep, but I am trying and I am being intentional in what I say and do. Um, but all the same, I don't want anyone to hesitate to continue the conversation with me. Um, I've learned so many things in the past few days um, where I have written things in different groups and somebody has kind of alerted me so respectfully and said, um, you know, hey, did you know that, um, you know, whatever the, the topic was, um, there are a couple of corrections that I've learned over time, um, particularly when dealing with um, the the Black Lives Matter movement to not use POC, um, which I didn't, I didn't know that because I had been seeing people use POC, but I was asked to refer to Black specifically um, when speaking on behalf of the Black Lives Matter movement. So little things that we're picking up along the way and learning, um, I think that's really the only way we do it. It's a little nerve wracking uh, because we are throwing ourselves out there, but it's so important that we have to. There's like just not a choice about it. And on that note, I want to thank the Family Resource Center and the Community Foundation for supporting this episode. And I really want to give a huge thanks to our guest today, Melina. So here she comes in three, two, one. Hi. Oh, and I have you muted. That's no fun. There we oh, go. Now we can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Oh, hi, everybody. Hi, Val. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me today. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you so much for stepping up to do this, too. Well, I'm um, very delighted to be here. I love talking about books. I love talking about the books and resources that people can access here in our community in our public library. So this is um, a very important topic, and I just hope that I can contribute to it and offer some insight and Hopefully you'll learn about some books that might help you prompt some discussions with your children, your teens, and in your communities and with your friends and family. Yes, thank you. And you know, a really neat thing that you just brought up um, when, when we were chatting just before this is that it's not that the library has just purchased many of these titles in the last week. Mm -hmm. No, we've had, we've had, um, um, titles in our collection that we've, um, you know, we're always actively seeking out titles to make our collections diverse and, and make sure that they're reflecting a broad range of experiences and voices that are in our communities and in our country. So thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And um, for everybody watching, just so you know, um, Melina is going to be providing an incredible list of resources for us today. Um, there is a document that I am going to be putting a link to um, in our uh, in our comments and in the main part of the post. That is going to be an organic document. So Melina and I were just talking about that. We're as as we find things, we're going to add um, resources to it. We also just started talking about um, setting up like a little bit of a color coding system on it, so you can see which books are best suited 
for early childhood versus K2 um, and that type of thing. So that way you have a quick access to it. And um, at the end of it, um, Melina has put a really cool selection of resources where you can, I mean, because we were talking about like, this is literally just like the tippy tippy top of the iceberg that we're going over today. There are so many beautiful resources out there. Um, and so um, there's some links to some other places to look for additional um, resources um, in addition to what Melina is gonna give you today. So A, thank you for all the work you have done to pull today's episode together. And I'm just gonna hand it on over to you. Just call out for me when you need an image. Okay, thank you so much, Val. And thanks okay. everybody for joining me today. Um, as I said, I'm happy to be here and I'm really excited to share some resources with you. I don't want to, I'm gonna give a little preface because I don't want people to get the impression that um, there's been a lot of diversity in the publishing world. Um, honestly, there hasn't been there um, over the years. So there have been, you know, a few and far between, there have been some um, voices that we've seen in children's books and in teen literature. However, it hasn't been until recently that we've been seeing this uptick in um, titles that are offered to our families and children and teens. And in fact, it's really only been the last five years. We are not even close to where we need to be to make sure our collections are um, diverse and, and um, showcasing the broad range of experiences that um, our children and families go through here in the United States. So I just really wanted to make that point. Um, it's so important that children get to see themselves in books see themselves represented see their stories see their experiences represented it's also vitally important that children learn about other children's experiences and um, fiction and nonfiction are wonderful ways to do that and help prompt discussions so um and I know we don't have a huge uh, amount of time to cover everything, and I am going to try to cover a lot. And I know it might be a little bit overwhelming in terms of the amount of information I'm going to give you, but I hope that you'll stay with me and you will find some uh, resources that can help your families and um, your um, particular individual circumstances. Now, I wanted to say that um, in response to... Um, the recent events that are going on around racial and um, social justice and the protests and the murder of George Floyd, I thought that I would start off with giving some titles that would be very appropriate um, at looking at those kind of issues of racial disparity and social just justice. And the books that I wanted to talk about, um, they're not always for little children, so I'll try to identify which ones are more for teens and young adults and which ones are gonna be for younger children. But before I do that, I just wanna let you know, we just got in some brand new books that um, I just wanna quickly share the titles. We've got new books coming in all the time showing diversity. This one is called The Proudest Blue. So it is looking at a young girl's experience watching her sister get her first hijab that she's gonna wear. So, you know, there's all kinds of diversity. We have My Poppy Has a Motorcycle, a wonderful story about um, a Mexican American immigrant experience with a, a daughter sharing a motorcycle ride with her father. And then one of my favorites right now is Fry Bread. It's a Native American author who's written about how fry bread, a common food amongst many Native American tribes, and how it um, sort of ties their history and community together. And then moving forward, very brand new is Ghost Boys. So Ghost Boys actually is looking at a, a shooting, a police shooting of an African American boy. And so I thought, wow, this is really timely because this was just published and um, you know, this is the kind of uh, kind of conversations we're hearing from some parents in our community. They're wanting books that they can share with their children to help them understand some of the, the history around racial disparity and um, um, police police relations and um, social justice issues. So, Ghost Boys, very very recent title that I wanted to share with you. I'm probably not going to be spending a lot of time today 
discussing um, a, you know, the, the range of diversity for everything from like um, different family structures to ethnic diversity to religious diversity to um, LGBTQ issues. I'm today I'm going to focus more on the um, racial racial diversity, specifically African American and biracial Americans. So some of the books that we are seeing on lists that are being recommended for people looking for information specific to um, the uh, racial disparity and social justice issues are, and I hope Val, you have this one. I think you have this one. This is great for teens and young adults. It's called Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism, and You. It is by one of my favorite authors, Jason Reynolds, and also um, professor and author Ibram X. Kendi. This is um, what the cover you're seeing. This is a uh, the young kind of like a young readers edition. There is a version for adults. So this one is getting a lot of attention. Also by Ibram X. Kendi is how to be anti-racist. And I think Val's got a cover of that as well. He's um, a pretty prolific author right now. He's writing a lot and talking about these um, conversations and um, subjects about racism and anti-racism. This is also going to be for older, this is not for younger children, but there is one for younger children. It's called A is for Activist, and Val's got a lovely, there you go, A is for Activist. A is for Activist, and a lot of these books I'm mentioning are in such high demand right now that they are either not in our collection, we're, um, they're on back order, we're actively seeking them out. Um, I think that's a good sign. That's another sign pointing to there's readership for books um, on these topics and hopefully the publishers will start responding accordingly because um, there's definitely readership. Uh, let's see, Anti-Racist Baby by Ibram X. Kendi as well. So this is going to be for younger kids. You can kind of already tell, I'm sure, by the by the illustrations that this is designed for, for younger kids. And then there is a series that includes a book called A Kid's Book About Racism by Jelani Memory. And I think we've also, there we go. It's a kid's book about racism. This is also a high, high demand <laughs> book right now that we are trying to get our hands on. And then there's Let's Talk About Race by Julius Lester. This is also going to be more for kids. Julius Lester, Let's Talk About Race. Wonderful way to get these, um, prompt these discussions. And then um, the next book is actually, it involves a story about a police shooting and how um, uh, the police treat Black African American members of the town very differently than they are treating the white members of the town. It's called Something Happened in Our Town by Marianne Solano. This one is very, very high demand right now because of the subject. And I don't know if Val, I think we don't have a, a, a visual image of this one because it is um, a more independently published title and we just didn't have it ready. Little Leader series. I don't know if you know about that series, but it it's Little Leaders. It's by Vashti Harrison, and they um, she's got a couple books in the series. There's Exceptional Men in Black History, which you're seeing right now, the cover. So you can get a, a, some historical context and read about um, wonderful achievements by black men in history. And then also the um, bold women in black history. Oh, look, Belle just got the cover of a child story about racial injustice. That's um, something happened in our town. So that's the cover. That's what it looks like. Um, and so Val, I don't know, do you have the Bold Women in Black History? That's also in the Little Leader series. If not, that's okay, but that's one that I would recommend. Um, so it looks a lot like the Exceptional Men in History, but it's got the, um, ex ex sorry, Exceptional Men in Black History, but it's got the, the Bold Women in, um, Black history. So that's a wonderful, wonderful series that I highly recommend. Um, so some, t so we are hearing from parents too, or saying that these, you know, these titles, they're great. I want to uh, use these titles and start with um, these resources for my children, but I'm concerned about how do I prompt this discussion with very, very young children. 
um, and wanting to maintain their innocence, but also help inform them and start educating them about these topics. And those, it's such a great question. And I took, uh, I mean, I participated in the Sesame Street Town Hall that was recently um, presented last Saturday. And what I was hearing from a lot of experts and a lot of leaders in the African-American community regarding how you broach this topic with young kids was to speak to, um, speak to the idea of fairness. You know, it might be really, really difficult for a young child to grasp concepts of like social justice and um, police brutality and um, um, uh, racial disparity. But if you start talking to children in terms of, of something that they are very instinctively aware of, and that is the idea of fairness. Um, and I wanted to, as I wanted to just point out a book that I think is a really great title that can help people with that specific topic of fairness and um, looking at uh, racial diversity. This is a book called Ready to Fly. It is the story of Sylvia Townsend. Sylvia Townsend wanted to be a ballerina. She was an African-American girl, but she was not allowed to be in um, dance school because of her the color of her skin and her race. I think that there's a lot of young girls out there who love dance. They might be active in ballet schools here on our island. I think this is a wonderful way that you could talk about that fairness issue and share this story. They probably will relate to the girl's love of dance, but you could ask them, well, you know, this, do you think this is fair? I don't think this is fair that she was not able to participate. So trying to bring, bring it down to a child's level and help them make this topic very relatable. So talking to the idea of fairness. Okay, so when you're looking at books for very young children, again, sometimes children aren't necessarily thinking about race. They're just being kids and having universal child experiences. But we are hearing from child development experts that kids do start to um, express some biases um, in terms of, of race and gender, even as young as two and a half, three years old. So when you're sharing books with babies, I always recommend trying to look for babies that showcase many, many diverse skin tones, hair textures, eye colors, eye shapes, starting even with board books. So here's um, this bookie toddler series. This is a book about trains, um, you know, hat, what goes with that. But the children who are featured in the books have a um, show diversity. And so that's a really key. You wanna start young with children and make sure that they are seeing that from the get-go. Global Babies is another great little board book showing babies from all around the world. Babies love to see pictures of other babies. So that's wonderful. And then a new book called Let's Go to the Farm. I love this book because we know there's a lot of kids in our community who do visit farms and they see farm animals or they are going to the fair and they are seeing the farm animals at the fair. This one shows two children. One is of um, African-American descent and there's also a Caucasian child and it just shows them having a fun time together having a universal experience not directly speaking about race but you can see that their race is um, shown in the images and it's not it's not a thing it's just celebrated but it allows for kids to see themselves in the in the story and it allows for other kids to see that there are children of different backgrounds so what a wonderful wonderful new book that's out right now Another awesome book. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you know the Parker Looks Up, but this is a great book for um, the preschool age. Parker Looks Up is the true story. It's based on the true story of the little girl who went into the portrait gallery in Washington, D.C. and saw Michelle Obama's painting on the wall and her expression. So I don't know if you remember that moment. It was in the media, but this is a delightful, delightful book. So I highly recommend this. 
So now getting to kind of more of my, my list that we're going to share, I love Jacqueline Woodson, The Day You Begin, showing all kinds of diversity um, and how maybe it might feel a little strange and different and scary to be that person going into a room, like maybe going into a new school, a club, whatever it is, just um, being that, being a little bit different and being okay with it. So celebrating differences. And then I Am Enough is um, by Grace Byers. This is also a wonderful picture book that I would recommend showing, um, again, uh, very positive images of African-American children. And another one of my favorite is Hair Love. So Hair Love is just the sweetest story about a young girl. She happens to be African-American and she wants her hair done. Her mom is not around. So her dad steps up to help her with her hair and getting ready. This um, was made into an animated short and I believe it won the Academy Award. So if you want to, you could also look for that. I think it's on YouTube right now. So another great book just showing um, childhood experiences and those diverse experiences. Mixed Me. There's there's two by this author, Tay Diggs. There's Chocolate Me, which we don't currently have. That's another high demand item that we're looking for. But we do have Mixed Me by Tay Diggs, looking at um, the experience of a biracial child and what that child goes through and um, and how, how kids at school react to the child and then how that child um, deals with those emotions surrounding that experience. So this one is a, a really um, a, a title that we're seeing on lists and also Chocolate Me. All Are Welcome is a newer book. It is um, showcasing all kinds of diversity, not just racial diversity, but also religious diversity, ethnic diversity, um, diversity surrounding um, mobility issues. It's just a really sweet book, making sure that kids know that they are included in um, the community, just, you know, despite what they look like, they're just, everybody is welcome. So a very, very positive message, as you can see, here's a young girl in a hijab wearing her headscarf. So um, I recommend that one as well. Um, now one that's not, when you look at it at first, you're not gonna think Black Lives Matter, but this has a Black Lives Matter message. Um, it's called Hands Up. Hands Up has not always had the most um, positive connotation because Hands Up is something that police often shout out when they are um, getting, you know, having confrontation with, with African Americans. They're saying Hands Up to show that they are not armed. This author has taken the concept of Hands Up and tried to make it positive for kids. Um, and it just shows that all the things that we do with our Hands Up and at the very end, they are protesting and they're using hands up to hold up signs to protest. And you can see there's um, a sign here that says Black Lives Matter. So this is another title that I would recommend if you want to start prompting that conversation about um, Black Lives Matter movement and also what um, the, the concept of hands up. Okay. Well, those are some picture books recommendations that could be good for preschoolers and um, early elementary school kids. Now, if you have some uh, readers, some independent readers, and you are looking for chapter books, this is where I just, I cannot wait to share the chapter books with you. Jason Reynolds. If you do not know about Jason Reynolds, please look him up. He is a phenomenal writer. He is um, still pretty young, but he is prolific. And he has such an array of um, books for children and teens. He's the uh, co-author of Stamped, the book about racism. But he wrote this book for kids called Ghost. It's in the track series. And it is absolutely delightful. It was one of our Children's Choice Award books. So a lot of the kids at Friday Harbor Elementary School might recognize the title. This was our runner up. They chose this one as their runner up. Um, it doesn't specifically deal with um, racial disparity necessarily. It's dealing more with a kid who is 
part of a track team and, and like how does he fit in with that? But it is an African American char character who's central to the story, and the author, of course, is African American as well. I love this book. I could read it over and over and over and over again. It is also um, a National Book Award finalist. So please, please, please check out anything by Jason Reynolds because he's fantastic. Um, Jacqueline Woodson is another one of my favorite African American authors. Well, I'd say she's my favorite, one of my favorite authors, but she happens to be African American. She wrote Harbor Me. This is a profound story of kids getting together and they come from all kinds of different ethnic and racial backgrounds and they're learning about each other's experiences and each other's families. So profound. And at the very end, it's just like a heartbeater. So Jacqueline Woodson is great. Um, the Gone Crazy in Alabama. And then also there's One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. I love her book. So Gone Crazy in Alabama. Um, doo -doo -doo. One that deals more with um, historical fiction regarding civil rights movement that has been, this is a, a little bit older book, but it's called The Watsons Go to Birmingham 1963. Gives you a lot of insight for kids into the civil rights movement and what it sort of seeing it through a, through a child's perspective and a child's eyes. There are children who live in the North who are going down to um, Birmingham to travel and visit family. So excellent book. Um, another historical fiction book that I love is called Stella by Starlight, I mean Stella by Starlight by Sharon M. Draper. This was another Children's Choice Award book. Um, it deals with a young girl in the Jim Crow South who um, is dealing with a, a, the K, a KKK experience, experience and something she witnesses. It's a really good book to start having that conversation with children about the KKK and white supremacists and the Jim Crow South. Um, and I know a lot of um, students who've read this really enjoyed this story and they felt like they learned a lot. Um, one thing I... I notice about children's books, specifically dealing with um, civil rights or Jim Crow and white supremacists and KKK, is that oftentimes they are set in the South because that's where a lot of um, those events happened. And I, you know, I'm always looking for books that might also showcase how white supremacy and the KKK were um, in other areas of the country. And even though this is not written by an African-American author, it's a Jewish American author named Karen Hess. I just wanted to include it. It's called Witness. Um, it deals with a, a, a small town in Vermont where a, K, a person of the uh, white supremacist KKK is moving into that town and the reactions that the um, residents have to that. Specifically, there's two girls in the story. One is Jewish American and one is African American and how they um, have to deal with the situation. So I wanted to throw that in because not everybody, I think, I don't want the kids, especially in our area in Washington state to think, oh, racism and KKK and white supremacy is only happening in the South or it's only happening in inner city areas. I, so this is a book that I, I kind of go to because it is a small town and it is in the North. So that's one that I'd like to highlight. Okay, so moving on. I know we're, we're covering a lot, but I want to make sure we get, get some more stuff out there. There are some books that aren't necessarily, um, also not necessarily dealing specifically with uh, like race or um, police shooting or civil rights, but they feature African American characters. One is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. This is a brand new book and oh yay, Val's got a cover of it. This is an action adventure fantasy. Um, I know that a lot of kids are looking for action adventure fantasy. And so what I love about this book is that it is showing African American characters and some African um, goes into some African legends and folklore from the continent of Africa. But it is um, like it's allowing that African American characters to be in broader genres. And so I, I think that this is going to be a big hit, this particular book. 
and it's always checked out. <laughs> it's just always checked out. So I hope that it will um, maybe spark more publishing interest in, in doing some more action adventure stories featuring African American characters. Okay, so there's also graphic novels. I don't have it a copy on me, but it's New Kid by Jerry Craft. This one just won the Newbery Award. Um, and a lot of kids, I think, love graphic novels. A lot of kids can relate to that universal experience of being a new kid, whether it's a new kid on, in, a, in a new school or a new kid um, you know, in a church group or a new kid on a, on a sports team. So this one, again, just a lot of universal childhood experiences that kid, kids can relate to. And then I wanted to mention Brendan Buckley's Universe and Everything in It by Sunday T. Frazier. This is about a biracial boy who is very much into geology and science, is a regional author. Um, fantastic, fantastic book. So I hope people would be willing to um, read that one. It's a lot of fun, especially for those boys out there who love science and geology. It's a great story. Okay, so moving on to our teen recommendations. Um, again, going back to that idea of action adventure and comics, which are so, so huge for a lot of young readers. This one is another Jason Reynolds. Oh my gosh, he is fantastic. He did Miles Morales Spider-Man. So if you've seen like the Spideyverse movie um, or if you like the Marvel comics, um, I would recommend checking this one out because it does have a, a, a person of color as the main character. Jason Reynolds also has written All American Boys. So this one, you will probably see this on a lot of lists and for good reason because it is specifically dealing with um, an African American who is wrongly accused of a crime and the um, events that unfold as a result of that. Um, so this one, very, very topical. We are seeing lots of innocent African-American boys being, um, you know, getting into uh, situations with police and being being charged and jailed. So a very, very critical topic. And I love that Jason Reynolds has written about it. And so this one is All American Boys. There's March. There's a graphic novel by John Lewis. He um, does a series about the civil rights movement and his experience with it. So another um, a book and option out there for those readers who enjoy graphic novels over maybe like reading a fiction chapter book. Um, there's The Hate You Give. I think I don't have a copy of it. That one's always checked out. It is a literary sensation. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Some of you might have read this book. This is for um, teens, but also adults. Adults love this book as well. It is, um, uh, you can see the, the emblems on there showing how many awards it's won. It was also made into a movie recently. So I recommend The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. And I think Val can talk about it because she's recently read it and loved it. One of my all time favorite books for teens, I recommend this book to every teen is Monster by Walter D. Myers. And it is uh, a riveting story. Again, it's, it's involving an African-American um, character protagonist who uh, is possibly wrongly, can, uh, wrongly um, charged with a crime. And it goes through his trial and it looks at how he's dealing with lawyers and the court proceedings. And it's just a trailblazer of a book. And Walter D. Myers is a phenomenal writer. So I would recommend pretty much anything by Walter D. Myers. But Monster is, but it was one of those books that I read that it was like a game changer in terms of teen literature. So I, I cannot recommend Monster enough. That was a fantastic book. And then finally for teens, I always like to point out this title. This is a, a nonfiction, it's a biography by, it's called Claudette Colvin, Twice Toward Justice. Claudette Colvin, a lot of kids might have heard of like Ruby Bridges or they know Rosa Parks and they might know about the bus boycotts and 
in the South and, and Martin Luther King Jr. But Claudette Colvin was actually a teenager who refused to give up her seat on a bus in the South. And this was done before Rosa Parks. And so in some ways, Claudette Colvin was kind of an influencer for that larger movement that Rosa Parks has become such a, an iconic figure for. It's a brilliant, brilliant um, way to uh, kind of reinforce to teens that they have a voice, that they can be a part of history, they can change their circumstances, they can um, influence a lot. And I think we're seeing that with the protests with the Black Lives Matter there are a lot of young people getting involved and we don't often see teenagers being represented in history books. And so I'd like to point out this um, pretty amazing story about Claudette Colvin. And she also started doing some um, other rebellious things in her Southern town, like not straightening her hair and wearing her hair more natural. So I, I know me personally, I really enjoyed learning about Claudette Colvin. Okay. So there's three other books. Oh, I see messages. Oh my goodness. We will have to keep, um, we, I know I'm not covering everything. I'm just barely scratching the surface, but I don't want to overwhelm people with titles. And um, we will provide more links for folks who are listening. But I wanted to um, just talk about three books that I read when I was 17, 18. And um, they're not necessarily written for teens. They are books that were written for adults, but they had a huge impact on my, um, just my, my uh, sort of transformative experience of going from being a teen to an adult. And they are, um, let's see, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I love this book. It's one of my all time favorite books. And it was probably not the first book that I had read by an African-American author but it um, definitely showed me that there were so many other voices out there in um, literature and it just opened my world. The second book was um, Temple of My Familiar by Alice Walker. I don't have a, a cover, sorry, but that book was also just really life-changing for me and, and, and I um, ended up reading more, more titles by Alice Walker. Where she's also the author of um, The Color Purple. But the first book that I ever checked out with my new library card, I went into the library, the public library at 18 years old, and I got, oh, there we go. There's Temple of My Familiar. I got um, my library card, and I just browsed the shelves, and I found The Ways of White Folks, Stories by Links and Hughes. And um, it was just, it was a really profound moment for me, and I ended up just loving um, that book. And I love that you can sometimes just browse and find things too. And just that um, moment of discovery. You don't always have to be getting necessarily recommendations from me or other people. I really invite people to just browse and also kind of find on their own and discover on their own that there are titles that might speak to them. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up here pretty quick, but I wanted to end with two books that I just absolutely love. They're near and dear to my heart. This is a, a fairly new book called Strange Birds, A Field Guide to Ruffling Feathers by Celia C. Perez. She is a dynamo author who has come onto the literary scene. Strange Birds showcases four girls, four um, kind of middle grade girls who have very different backgrounds, um, immig a Cuban immigrant, there's a, you know, an African um, Caribbean American. They are coming together, learning about each other, learning about their family histories. What I love about this book is that it has two things that are so topical right now. It addresses generational wealth and white privilege, not something that we see talked about directly in a lot of children's books, this book does talk about it. And it also talks about activism. And these girls end up sort of um, coming together around a cause. They decide that they want to take a stance and they learn about activism and how to make that activism work to um, impart, so, uh, impart a change and make a difference. So this book, oh my goodness, please, 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 
please read Strange Birds. What a wonderful, wonderful chapter book for kids. And I'm going to end with my very favorite book for younger kids called The Skin You Live In. It is by Michael Tyler. It is so bright, so cheery, and it celebrates all of the skin colors that babies and children come in. It has um, showcases different textures of hair, different, um, different family structures, and the rhyming text is so accessible for young children who like that kind of rhythm and cadence that you get in a lot of picture books. So I highly recommend this skin you live in. So I know that's a lot, but hopefully I've given you some ideas. As I said, I'm actively seeking out more information. I'm actively seeking out more books so that we do have diverse collections. Um, diversity, I think, just makes us stronger. And um, if there's something I said today that it, it doesn't feel right or um, you want to provide me with guidance on, please, please, please reach out. I am open to any kind of criticism, correction, um, suggestions, and I just hope that moving forward, we will see more diversity in children's books and teen literature, not less. Val, are you there? I'm here. <laughs> You know what? It's so funny. I have to tell you that as you were writing, saying some of those, I started writing down the titles and I was oh, like, wait a minute. It's all in the document. Yeah. That <laughs> I know I've got I'm speeding through them pretty quick. So that's why it'll be nice to have that document with the titles and the authors. And absolutely. And as you were talking, you mentioned um, hair love on YouTube. So yeah. I went and found that and I added that link into the document. So Oh, um, good. Yeah, so that's in that resource list now as well. And then um, another thing that's in that resource list um, is You Matter. Oh, good. I, I know. I realized I forgot to mention You Matter by Christian Robinson. And then The Last Stop on Market Street. They're two wonderful picture books. And You Matter is brand new. Just came out this month. And you have a video. So if you, yeah, talk about it. It's great. Yeah. And so um, I put a link to the video and it's Christian Robinson, who's the illustrator for the book. And sorry, who's the author? For You Matter. I think he is the author. And oh, he is the author as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a PBS put it out. So it's a video that's on YouTube courtesy of PBS and um, it's him reading it and it's great. Yeah. It's a really, really fun read. And so um, he's awesome. Yes. He yeah. He's really <laughs> awesome. And PBS has been doing an incredible job of um, just having authors reading their books the last few weeks. I mean, actually, they've been doing it since we've been in stay in place kind of across the nation. But man, what they're pulling out right now is just so great. We're so lucky to have that national resource. Yeah, and I um, I, t I did um, watch the Sesame Town Hall meeting that they had about, um, you know, talking parents and answering questions from parents about racial disparity and social justice and the protests and Black Lives Matter. And it was, it was very informative. So I'm so appreciative for well, that. Well, I heard whisperings, and I think I mentioned this to you, of a, um, a task force getting together on the island to like work through nonprofits and businesses and whatnot um, about becoming more conscious <laughs> yeah. um, of things. So, um, so that's out there. And if anybody's watching and that kind of interests you, most definitely, you know, let's keep the conversation going. We live in a time of headlines. Where, yeah. where headlines come through and it's what captures us. But this is a topic that cannot be passed as just another headline. This right. is so deeply rooted in our country. It's um, so deeply rooted in the way we think about things. And I've seen some really just incredible resources in the last two weeks. I've been really searching it out. And um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot to add to the list. Yeah, I am. I'm. I'm actually looking forward to that task force. I hope that comes into fruition because I think there's a lot of um, things that we can look at here in our own community. Things that we're doing um, regarding like negative reinforcement versus positive reinforcement. How we can model better behavior. So I. I really hope that that comes 
comes to be. Right. And it, I, one thing that I did read the, um, I think um, the days are all melding together right now, but uh, <laughs> that I read recently was really, um, we have a tendency to, to kind of do that needs to change and that needs to, like we're very good at acknowledging what is wrong out there, but to really start digging deep um, for ourselves to say, I need to change. And not just because some people have the tendency to be, to, to throw out different statements. I won't even throw them out there right now, but to throw out various statements and say, well, I'm good. I'm not a racist. I'm not this, but it's like everybody right now, um, I think one of the best practices we can do right now is to look at ourselves, to put the mirror up and to say, I need to change. Um, none of us are flawless um, in any way, shape, or form. And so really sticking that mirror up and figuring out where do I start? Yeah, yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah, just some little thing for today. For everybody. I hope it's a transformative time and a, and a time of mass healing. Indeed, indeed. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Val. I love um, – coming on your show. I love that you included the library because I do think that the library and libraries across the country are um, amazing places that can showcase diversity. So thank you so much for having having me on, but really having um, the, the community's public library on. Yeah, well, it's a very important place in our <laughs> world. And, oh, I know one thing before we go. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Well, yeah. actually, two more things. So how about that? But um, one is that we started talking about the ability to use the e-books. Oh, yes. So so we we have e-books available. I know we're still in, in um, uh, you know, our stay home, stay healthy reopening plan. So the Currently, the library is not open at the moment, but you can get digital ebooks by going to our library website. So those are available. And um, actually, on our Washington Anytime Library, which is the service that we offer, they are putting out lists of Black Lives Matter titles and um, some titles regarding like social justice and racial justice. So please go to our website and um, you know, look for our ebook selections. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I appreciate you adding that out there because I know um, you have an incredible selection to pull from there as well. Because I know some of these titles, um, if people are going, if you're going to buy a book, Griffin Bay Bookstore is our local bookstore. Yeah, Griffin Bay has done an amazing job. And I think Serendipity is also open too, um, which is nice for some of these books. If you, you might have to find some of them used if, because they are in such high demand and they are in back order. So that's another option too, is look, look through Serendipity. I know um, it's funny. I was talking to a friend the other day and I'm not even going to mention the company's name because they're <laughs> not here. But um, it was like a knee jerk, like, oh, I got to go get on there and order some books. And I was like, ah, ah, like, you call Griffin Bay and Griffin Bay you can order <laughs> online too. So always support local first, always yeah. support local first. And the last thing, I know I said there was only one more thing, but whatever, <laughs> um, is we're going to see you in two weeks. Oh, yes. I, I'm so happy to come back. I'm going to do lap, sit, and linger and um, focus on early literacy and learning for babies. It is never too early to start. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah, so I'm just thrilled that we get more Melina. So. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Val. Thank you. We'll take care and thank you. Okay, bye, Val. See you. Bye, everybody. To everyone out there, thank you so much for enjoying us today. One of our longest episodes, but well worth every single minute. What a treasure we have in Melina. And thank you for taking the time to put all those resources together in the comments and in the outline of this uh, video. We have um, a link to the resource document, like we mentioned before. That's going to be an organic document that we're adding to over time. As you watch this, if there are titles that kind of you, that have been transformative for you, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments, and we'd be happy to add them to our resource list. Thank you so much, and until tomorrow, keep listening and learning. Bye-bye.